And to talk to us more about how these kinds of searches work is Jim Bellingham, executive director of the Johns Hopkins Institute for Assured Autonomy. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. So, you know, it seems like all kinds of conditions for these teams to have to deal with. What should we know about searches like this? Well, first of all, there's there's really two different parts of the uh, area that are searched quite differently. So the surface of the water um, where, uh, where uh, people might be if they are drifting uh, is searched uh, with a set of things, including including uh, uh, aerial assets and including uh, boats. Uh, the undersea part of it, if they're trapped in the wreckage or if they're on the seafloor, uh, that's uh, a tougher problem. And so you'll use a combination of sonar systems to map the area and identify uh, things that you want to investigate. Uh, and then you'll put divers down or perhaps little robots down to investigate them and actually make the, the real identification and perhaps the recovery. Hmm. And what sorts of the conditions are they facing out there, as you mentioned, above the surface and even below? So this is a tidal estuary. Um, I looked for currents uh, near the Key Bridge. There's no uh, uh, no tight. There's no current gauges there. Uh, there's one down in Annapolis. Uh, it shows currents uh, uh, hit about a, a mile an hour, which doesn't sound very fast, uh, you know, if you're walking. But if you're looking for something. Uh, and it's drifting away at the rate of a mile of an hour. Well, the ocean, the ocean gets very big very quickly. You start out with a problem which is very constrained. You're looking right near uh, the incident site, and then as time goes on, you have to have cover a larger and larger area. So the currents make it a lot more difficult uh, searching for for things that are on the surface. And then below the surface. Uh, uh, this is an area which has a mud bottom. Uh, you have a lot of rivers uh, uh, flowing into it, and so it's pretty murky. So the visibility is terrible, and that's why you will use sonar systems uh, to do sort of a broader area search, and then go down and investigate. You know, sometimes visibility can be so bad that divers are literally feeling their way around. Wow. Wow. And you know, as time passes, what can these searchers expect? It just seems like such a huge area and so much pressure. Yeah, so, so this is where a professional search team will be working hard um, to number one on the surface, understand which way the currents are going. So the Coast Guard uh, that I've, I've had the honor of working with over the years is exceptional at searching for missing people at sea. One of the first things they do is they figure out where are the currents going. So where where might they have carried the boat or the people they're looking for? And so that will be an important part of just sort of the background information that they'll use for planning the surface search. And then subsea, it's, it's about having the right tools. Uh, and fortunately, here we are in Baltimore. Uh, we have a lot of great capabilities. Uh, there are some tremendous undersea technology companies in our area and undersea technology uh, government laboratories. And so they have tools for doing this exploration, but just those tools are, are not enough. You need to also have the software to, to, to actually take the measurements made by the tools and turn them into real maps. If you don't do that, then you run the risk of sort of running around and missing an area. You you cover one area three times and another area you don't see at all. Mm -hmm. So that whole process of setting it up and making sure that you really are getting complete coverage and you're not missing areas will, will be a, a, an important part of it. And they'll be tracking that very carefully. All right, Jim. Well, thank you for your expertise. We appreciate you joining us this morning. Well, thank you for having me.